Greetings and welcome to part two of Halloween week. Thank you for once again joining me on this journey into the mysterious and creepy. Today I have for you a couple of Pokemon related creepy pastas. Now you might think Pokemon are cute and innocent and they can't possibly be scary. Well, I'm here to prove you wrong. The first story was brought to me by a good friend of mine, Hattori1181 also known as Batsmaru. It is the infamous Pokemon creepypasta, Pokemon Black. I'm what you would call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency with which you can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. They're generally fun, even if they are unplayable, which they often are. The mistranslations and poor quality make them unintentionally humorous. I've been able to find most of the ones that I've played online, but there's one that I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. Here's a picture of the cartridge in case anyone recognizes it. Unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I lost the game. So I can't provide you with any screen caps, sorry. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar intro of the red and blue version. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said black version under the Pokemon logo. Upon selecting new game, the game started with the Professor Oak speech and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you had an addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. Another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of the ghosts that are encountered in Lavender Town before obtaining the Sylph Scope. It had one attack. Curse. I know that there is a real move named Curse, but the attack did not exist in Generation 1, so it appears it was hacked in. Defending Pokemon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokemon would be heard, but it was distorted, played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear, and the defending Pokemon would be gone. If used in a battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication was that the Pokemon died. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing Red receive 200 money for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. You could also select Curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone, like the ones at Lavender Tower. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against ghost Pokémon. It would also fail if it was used against trainers that you would have to face again, such as your rival or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, however. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously uncapturable ghosts. And because Curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four which consisted of Ghost and a couple of Pokemon I used for HMs, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, Many years later. It then cut to Lavender Tower. An old man was standing, looking at the tombstones. You then realized that this man was your character. The man moved at only half your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokemon with you, not even Ghost, who up to this point had been impossible to remove from your party through depositing into the PC. The overworld was entirely empty. There were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you used Curse on, however. You could go pretty much everywhere in the overworld at this point, 
though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokemon to use HMs. And regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued on an infinite loop. After wandering a while, I found that if you go through Diglett's cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there, allowing you to advance and return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going into the exact tile where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. Then a sprite of a Caterpie appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle and then a Pidgey. I soon realized, as the Pokemon progressed from Rattata to Blastoise, that these were all of the Pokemon that I had used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, and then a bug catcher. These were the trainers I had cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Lavender Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on the screen, it was little more than a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, the same as the one that teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appears on the other side, along with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items, and you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was to fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect Ghost, but did chip off a bit of your own HP. When it was Ghost's turn to attack, it would simply say, dot, dot, dot. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black a final time. Regardless of the buttons you pressed, you were permanently stuck on this black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn the Game Boy off. When you played again, New Game was the only option. The game had erased the file. I've played through this hack many, many times, and every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't use Ghost at all, though he was impossible to remove from the party. In these cases, it did not show any Pokemon or trainers, and simply cut to the climactic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably not for monetary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey a message, though it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was. The inevitability of death? The pointlessness of it? Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a children's game. Regardless, this children's game has made me think, and it has made me cry. Ah, the Lavender Town music always gets me in just the right mood for Halloween. The next Pokemon story I have was requested by... by... Seriously, with this name, you're gonna make me do this? Okay, fine. The next Pokemon story I have was requested by Hitler Loving Me on Tumblr. Yeah, thanks for that. It is Nurse Joy's Healings. And I'm gonna have to give this one a little trigger warning for some medical horror coming up, as you might imagine from the title. I've always been a big Pokemon fan ever since I was young. I played all the generations of Pokemon. However, everything changed today when a particular event happened to me when I wanted to play Pokemon for that good old nostalgic feeling in Pokemon Leaf Green. Recently, I decided to go back and play all the Pokemon generations and beat them all over again with new starters and different challenges, and I was able to do so until I realized my Pokemon Leaf Green was missing. I asked my mom if she sold it or did anything like that, but she told me she would never sell any of my games since she respects what's mine. So I decided to go on eBay and buy Pokemon Leaf Green from someone. It said it was in good condition and that it should arrive in two days, 
Then today it finally arrived and I was overjoyed to finally finish the nostalgic experience. I went to retrieve my game from the mail and bring it back upstairs to put it in my DS. I opened the small envelope it was in, and there it was, Pokemon Leaf Green. It looked like it was in good condition, with only a few small scratches on the game. I finally started it up and listened to the opening music. Damn, was Pokemon good at making their melodies. When I pressed start, I realized there was no save file, but that was just a small matter to me, really. I finally started the game with Oak lecturing me about Pokemon and me naming my character and all of that. I finally got to choose my beginner, and I decided to choose Bulbasaur since I never chose him before. I decided to nickname him Bob since I like to give my Pokemon their very own names. And finally, I began my adventure. After beating Brock and catching a Pidgey since I love its evolution Pidgeot, I decided to go to the Pokemon Center to heal up my Pokemon, but I always hated the Poke Center. There's something about Nurse Joy's text that always disturbs me. Whenever she says, we hope to see you again, it just unsettles me completely. It makes it feel like she wants to continuously see me in the Poke Center with my fainted Pokemon. But I had to deal with that if I wanted to beat the final Pokemon game of my nostalgia trip. I brought Bob and my Pidgey name Mike to her and I kept mashing the A button until it said if I wanted to heal my Pokemon or not, which I obviously clicked yes on. Then Nurse Joy said that one line I hate, we hope to see you again. It bothered me, but I just ignored it and continued onward to Cerulean City. Later on in my adventure after beating Koga and catching a Kadabra and Pikachu, I realized something odd about my Pokemon. Their attacks were getting weaker. It was really strange. I realized that when I was fighting Koga with my Kadabra that I trained with new psychic abilities to go up against Koga's poison-type Pokemon. The text would say it's super effective, but the damage wasn't that much. It was completely strange. Finally, I barely beat Koga with Mike and obtained my fourth badge. All my other Pokemon fainted. Kadabra, Bob, and Pikachu. I finally headed to the Pokemon Center, which was where things became even weirder when I talked to Nurse Joy as always, and recovered my Pokemon. After talking to her, I checked my Pokemon, which I should have probably done when I noticed the strange events that took place. The images of those innocent Pokemon that looked so happy or fierce were completely different. The images of the Pokemon on my screen looked like they were tired and in pain. I thought to myself, what? This can't be happening. I mean, I mean, after all, it's only a Pokemon game and this can't be possible. It's only in stories that this happens. Or maybe this is some kind of hack. Then I suddenly thought to myself, wait a minute, how is this happening? My Pokemon's attacks are lower, they look like they're in pain. What could be causing this? So then I returned to the Pokemon Center yet again to see if maybe I could restore them. But then that's when matters became even worse. I talked to Nurse Joy again to see if they could really turn back to the way they were. And then I realized something odd in her script. Sora, we really hope to see you again and again and again. Because we are going to have so much fun. I had to look at my DS at least three times to make sure I was reading the script correctly, and I shouted out loud, What the fuck? I knew something was odd about her in the beginning. Give me my Pokemon back, you fucker! And then a door opened in the game, and Nurse Joy walked into it. Fucking bitch took my Pokemon! I was left with no Pokemon in my party and wondering what I could do to try to follow her into the room she just went to. I tried everything I could until I was up on the counter. It said, would you like to enter inside the healing center, yes or no? I clicked yes as the door swung open. I then proceeded into the black door Nurse Joy had disappeared into, with the hopes of gaining them back and nursing them myself into good condition. As I proceeded into the door, the screen went black, and the picture that showed on my screen of the once innocent Nurse Joy that I loved from the anime was different. It was Nurse Joy with some knives and syringes in her pocket. Her hair was all down and the front of her outfit had some blood on it, 
with Bob next to her and some cuts on his body and blood coming out. She already started the madness on Bob and I was fucking pissed off. I was glad I was able to move my own character, so I moved up a few steps and was suddenly stopped as Nurse Joy spoke to my character. So you finally figured out what I was doing, hmm? I've been doing this ever since you first came to the Pokemon Centers. I've done this with other trainers and they never noticed. You're the very first, so I applaud you. However, will you be able to save your other Pokemon? I was given an image of Mike, Pikachu, and Kadabra, looking very scared of what she was going to do to them. She then disposed of Bob, and then she turned to me and an image of her appeared again. An evil smirk, evil red eyes, and the long red hair almost indistinguishable from the blood on her. I had to do something. I was then able to move my character towards her, and I finally pressed A to interact with her. Another picture of her came up with text. It showed her bringing up Mike on the table that she cut and injected Bob on. I read the text and it said, You better not move another muscle or who knows what will happen to your precious Pidgeotto. I then saw a small animation of him squirming as Chansey came up to Nurse Joy and helped hold him down, as another animation of her injecting him with paralysis appeared. I was cursing so much frustrated at not knowing what I could do. No, I don't care if it's just a game. Ever since I got them, they were my friends. I can't leave them like this. If I moved, he was next, and she would kill the rest of my team, so what else was there to do? I pressed A again on Joy, and the text appeared as my character spoke for the very first time I've seen in my life. Don't you think that's enough? Please stop it, Joy. You're harming my Pokemon! And then Joy replied, saying, Ha! You're funny! I'll never stop! And then an action screen appeared, and it said, What will Sora do? And the options were Command Pokemon, Escape, and Try to Stop Nurse Joy. I proceeded to press A on Command Pokemon. It then asked which Pokemon I would like to command and showed the available Pokemon that could take action. Without thinking twice, I pressed A on Kadabra, and it asked me, what do you want Kadabra to do, with his moveset showing below the question, and I quickly chose Psychic. Then a text box appeared with Sora shouting, Kadabra, use Psychic on Nurse Joy and Chansey! And on the screen, it showed Kadabra using it to push them against the wall. Then I did everything as fast as I could. I clicked on my Pokemon and put them in their respective Pokeballs. I even picked up Bob and tried to escape as fast as possible. I then proceeded to the black door I came in, but before I reached it, some text appeared. No, I won't let you leave! Obviously, it was Nurse Joy. But then, something happened. I couldn't move, and an action box appeared, which asked, Would you like to release your Pokemon? I was confused as to why this happened, but as I waited, I saw a sprite of Nurse Joy and Chansey coming after me slowly. I quickly pressed yes, and it said all of my Pokemon were released into the wild, with an animation of them looking really sad to be leaving me alone. Finally, Nurse Joy caught up to me, and she said, Well, you just took all the fun. It looks like I have to kill you now. And then the screen went all black, and a text box appeared saying, And so Sora died releasing his Pokemon with hopes that this would never happen again. And then a screen came up showing my character all cut up and bloody, with syringes in him along with Nurse Joy next to my character with more blood on her. My character's blood. And a text box read, So who is next? And then I quickly shut off my DS, pulled out the cartridge, and threw it away. Now I won't ever look at Pokemon or Nurse Joy the same again. To this day, I hope this never happens to my fellow Pokemon gamers, as this was a very horrifying experience. The name given of the person who wrote this story was simply Sora. And that finishes the two Pokemon stories I had for you. Tomorrow I'll have one very short story and one very long story for you. And then Monday, my new long series will begin. See you all very soon.